So guys, here is the deal. Like you all ask me questions now. This is the time I ask you questions. So this is the DBA challenge for all of you who are listening to this episode. What will happen to the Oracle database when the database is running and I go ahead and delete one of the database control files? I do have multiplexed files, but still my question is what happens to the database? Like you have three multiplex control files. I delete one of them. Will the database stop? Will the database continue to work? What happens? Put down your comments below this video and meanwhile, let us jump on to the other side of the episode. Welcome back guys, Arun this side and I really know that we have taken one week gap between our daily DBA episodes. I'm trying hard, but unfortunately because I wanted to take one week break, so I was not able to record these shows, but I promise that we will continue with the same pace going forward. Now that being said guys, one thing you might have noticed that we have changed the format of this show. So what we have changed is like earlier, I used to take five questions and one bonus question. This time what I'm doing is I'm taking seven questions. So one question will be your daily DBA challenge and then I'll be taking five questions and then the bonus question. And I guess you all might have already noticed that we have already talked about the daily DBA, sorry, the DBA challenge question earlier in this video. That being said, guys, I am so excited for this episode after a break of one week. And let us start our show with the first question of the day. Can you speak about Oracle database auto upgrade tool? Yes, I can very much speak about the Oracle auto upgrade tool. And guys, this auto upgrade tool is introduced in the Oracle 18C and 19C version. So it is not available to you in the 12C version. Of course, 18C and 19C are also part of the 12C version. We can arguably say like that, but like, let us look at first what exactly is the upgrade, like database upgrade, what phases database upgrade goes through. The first phase is the pre-upgrade phase. So in the pre-upgrade phase, you have certain activities. I don't want to get into deep inside the activities. So you have pre-upgrade phase, then you have the main upgrade phase, and then you have post upgrade phase, right? So when you are performing a manual database upgrade, or if you are using DBUA, that is database upgrade assistant, it depends, right? So whichever method you use, you have to follow through all the three phases of database upgrade, the pre-upgrade phase, the database upgrade phase, and the post upgrade phase. That being said, the auto upgrade tool, which is introduced in 18C and 19C, the benefit is it automatically takes care of all the stuff during all the three phases and it automates the database upgrade process so that you don't have to manually get inside the upgrade process and perform the database upgrade. That's the beauty about the auto upgrade tool. So as I mentioned, like in general, also the database moves through three phases, like phase one, phase two, phase three, even auto upgrade moves from the phase one that is pre upgrade phase where it will analyze your database. Then it will go through the upgrade phase where it will perform the actual database upgrade. And later on, it will go through the third phase that is performing the post upgrade checks and looking at your database whether it is working fine after the upgrade has been done right so that's about auto upgrade tool guys but i guess i will put an amazing link which i like personally and that's from the oracle documentation which is in relation to auto upgrade tool which i want all of you to study so read about this auto upgrade tool as i mentioned earlier you cannot use this auto upgrade tool in the 12c version it is only available from 18C and 19C versions, right? That being said, let's move on to the next question of the day. How many connections can listener handle? Why do you have this question? See, first of all, whenever these kind of questions comes in, and I can believe that this question might have been asked to you by an interviewer, now you have to go back to the fundamentals. Okay, what are the fundamentals of the database? So. If you look at the listener, listener facilitates the user connection. So there is a user connection that is coming to the Oracle database server. So user is connecting to the listener, listener grabs the connection details and gives it to the PMON. That's the background process inside the database. 
So once the user authentication is done, Pmon says that okay, user gave correct credentials. So the connection is established, a server process has started on the server itself and this server process will directly communicate with the user process. So there is no role of listener. Listener is out of the picture. What do we conclude with this one? We conclude that listener will come into picture only when there is a new connection to the database server, right? So rather than asking this question, how many connections a listener can handle because listener does a job of pass over. So listener will grab the incoming connection, send the details to the PMOR process. That's what happens inside the database, right? So listener job is to just pass over the connections. So new connections are coming in, listener is passing it to the database, right? That's how it works. So rather than asking this question, how many connections a listener can handle, we must actually ask more smart questions like how many connections the database can handle because database is the ultimate one which is going to facilitate the user requests, right? So ultimately, I would say that how many connections can listener handle? This is a vague question because listener will be getting request and it will just pass on to the database. So there is no limit on to how many exact connections listener can handle because it is coming into picture only when there are new connections to the database. That being said, let's move on to the next question. Why data blocks are always 80% used and not 100%? Smart question, but look at it in a completely different way. Now, Oracle is storing data into the data blocks, right? So what will happen? Let's take a real world example. Now, assume that we have Jessica who gets married to John, right? So Jessica earlier had surname like Jessica A but now the surname has changed to Jessica John, right? So can you see the surname has increased, the number of characters in her surname has changed. So now if you want to facilitate this inside the Oracle database or any other storage system, assume what if her name was stored into a data block, which was 100% full. Now, if you want to modify her name, or in fact, any other field, maybe like address or you want to update something about a customer. Understand if in this case, the surname has been updated, the characters have increased, the data block is 100% full. So for this increase in little characters, right? From Jessica D to Jessica John, just by for those three characters, now the Oracle database has to assign a new block and that creates row chaining. And this row chaining is a big problem inside the database because now for Oracle to pull up the name, it has to pull up two data blocks from the disk. That is the biggest challenge in keeping all the data blocks 100% full. So that's the reason what happens is it's a good idea that you keep the data blocks 80% full. So little less than like, of course, 100%, little less than 100%. Now, when you do that, let's take there is a small change in the name, small change in the address, small change in the emails or any other field. The best part is that can be facilitated by that 20% free space. So you don't have to allocate a completely new block and create unnecessary row chainings inside the database, which will again create a performance issue. To keep it simple, that 20% of free space is kept for future updates, right? And that's why data blocks are not 100% full. I guess you get the concept. Let's move on to the next question. Can I have redo log groups with different size? Yes, but not recommended. And that's how Oracle works. See, I want you guys to go back into one of the episodes where I talked about redo log groups and members and how log writer rotates or moves through the redo log groups. I would like to uh, talk about it once again. Okay. So you have log writer and we know that log writer will move from one redo log group to the another redo log, right? So let's take you have three redo log groups. So log writer will write to the first redo log group and then log writer will write to the second redo log group and then the third redo log group 
and again it will continue to override the first redo log group redo log group not members okay now each redo log group might have multiple members and as oracle recommends that each member must be of equal size so in one group you can have 200 mb of redo log member one and member two would also be of 200 mb because those two members are multiplexed copies of each other right so if you lose one member you have the another member which will hold the redo log contents correct so that is like fair enough like if you are creating two multiplexed copies of redo log members they have to be of the same size makes sense but now we are going above the redo log members we are going to groups okay so we have group one which has two members we have group two which has two members we have group three which have again two members but according to this question can i have redo log groups with different sizes yes you can have it but as i said like it's not recommended i mean why would you want to keep your groups with different sizes it makes no sense to me and as i again i mentioned like you can have it if you want to but it might create a challenge when you are trying to set up the physical standby or other dr setups then you might face the challenges with the different size redo log groups i mean don't do it and i won't personally recommend it because i have personally never seen a database running in this kind of configuration so what you do is keep it simple you have redo log groups groups will have members so have the redo log members exactly as the same size definitely you have to and also when you have redo log groups all the redo log groups must also be of the same size keep it simple all right let's move on to the last question of the day i lost redo log file and have no multiplexed copy or archive log how can i recover the database I 100% believe that this question has also been asked to you in one of the interviews and that's why you are or that's why you had sent this question to me. That's okay. We'll try to analyze this question from the fundamental point of view. All right. So you lost. Okay. Let's look at how do you recover the database in order for you to recover any Oracle database, what you need. So basically you need the archive logs. So in this case, the question goes like I lost redo log files and have no multiplexed copy or archive log. So that means first option is gone. Archive logs are not available. So what is the next stage while recovering the Oracle database? If you don't have archive logs, you can always use redo logs. All right. Now we also have that condition ruled out because the question says I lost redo log file. All right and no multiplexed copies available. So all the options of recovering the Oracle database are completely gone. So in this kind of scenario, I can 100% say you have literally lost database transactions. That means you cannot recover the Oracle database. It's very simple. Now, some of the experienced DBS can argue with me saying like, oh, Arun, there are other ways, you know, you can perform an export import from a test system or perform an export import from a physical standby. I'm not considering all those hundreds of scenarios. I'm considering a simple database, single database server installation, which is somewhere on one small server in Singapore. And this kind of situation arises then it will be a challenge for you to recover the database because you have lost the transaction and any transaction loss is simply loss of data. But again, if you want to talk about hundreds of other scenarios, yes, there are other scenarios like you have a production database, you have a test database. So test database is refreshed like every hour. And what you can do is you can export from the test database and import that uh, those transactions back into the um, primary database or the production database. There are hundreds of scenarios, but I don't want to get into those scenarios. Like you might have a production database and then you have a development database where you have golden gate transactions, which is replicating each transaction from the production database to the development database. So what you can do is go back to the development database, perform an export, do an import, all those scenarios. I'm just keeping them out of the picture. I'm just talking about a silly server. Let's take a database which you have installed in your virtual machine and practicing and 
this scenario happens you lose the redo log file you don't have any multiplex copy you don't have archive logs simply accept the fact that you have lost the transactions and then you cannot take over the database that being said guys i think these questions i have and let's jump on to the most exciting part and that is the bonus question i will see you all on the other side welcome back guys i'm here with this new question and i guess this is an interesting question to me personally because when i have to manage someone i think a lot about these lines so let me read out this question for all of you the question goes something like this what is the one important skill every dba must have to increase their productivity and guys i'll tell you this one issue which i see lot of times when i'm working with other dbas or if i'm working with any client also the biggest problem is communication without proof and i'll i mean i'll prove my point in some time but here is the deal i see that a lot of you uh, like when i get emails from dbas also i see this a lot of time they will send an email saying like i am getting so and so error but they won't attach a proof of the error and that is something irritates me a lot of times like see understand what if whenever you have an issue you communicate with proof what is the problem in taking a simple screenshot of the issue attach it with the email send it to your client boss architect developer tester whoever it is how many emails you will reduce by simply communicating with proof understand how faster you can improve your own productivity while working with anyone like i'm not saying with me but with anyone all right so understand communication with proof is the biggest problem that i personally see which is stopping you all from being more productive so if you all want to be more productive start communicating with proof and when i say proof understand this i see that lot of you okay this is something i have faced guys so when i share this idea with other dbas they start communicating with the proof they send me the screenshot of the error but i guess even though that is not sufficient why because they will send me the exact error like aura error but they won't send the screenshot of the command that they ran inside the oracle database and that will also increase couple of emails once again now this is the deal guys so what you do is try to take the screenshot of what you have ran inside the database okay whatever the command you have along with the error that's when you speed up the process of increasing the productivity and then reducing the number of emails between you and the client or whoever it is so that being said guys one of my personal suggestions for all of you is start communication with proof this is the only thing that will increase your productivity to next level this will take things to next level this will reduce the number of emails between you and the client and i guess this is the only one skill which i believe that lot of dbas are lacking and that is communication with proof start communicating with proof i want all of you like audit your own emails like you check your own emails and see uh like how many times you are not sending a proof of what you are saying and going forward try to look at all your emails all your activities and try to send a proof of not concept proof of the error so whatever command you ran whatever error you get you have to have that in a screenshot send it attached to the email to the client or whoever it is right that being said guys please continue to send me your emails to support@dbgenesis.com and i will see you all in the next episode till then take care bye bye